I'm glad everybody made it today with with our uh, with our great system of uh, cancelization announcements. I'm glad everybody made it today. I mean, one day we have a have a uh, well, are they going to cancel classes or not? Are they going to cancel classes or not? And then finally, at about 11 o'clock at night, they cancel classes. Then the next day, they say. We're going to open at 9.30. And then, of course, everybody goes, really? And everybody's, like, closed. And everybody's, like, closed. All the... And then they let us know at 6.30 that we're closed. And then the next day, they say, oh, we're going to be open on the 12th. And then it's the 13th. So that was just Tri-County's leadership way of saying, now the students think we're incompetent. So... I just thought it was ridiculous. Well, you've had a long weekend, so that's good, right? All right. Now, this comes from my Math 103 class, and I use it for both classes. It's a good, it's a good question, although you probably will not see it. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and copy down those two sets of data. Now, what we're gonna be doing is comparing the two sets of data. So this is your first first time comparing two sets of data. I want you to find everything you can about those two sets of data. That means Mean, median, mode, range, mid-range, variance, standard deviation. Um, draw the uh, net, uh, normal curve with the standard deviation and the mean. Do a five-number summary. Do we cover five-number summary? Yes. Box plot, five-number summary. Do that. And see what you can ascertain by doing all that. Tell me what you can tell me about those two sets of data. And if you can't do that, then just consider yourself a failure. Oh. And you should quit school. Georgia squeaked by with a victory. South Carolina did good. Alabama, Alabama played a high school. I think they played Spartanburg High School. Clemson played somebody. Glad that wasn't the first game. So, how many of you have seen it? Well, congratulations. I've been to the theater three freaking times and I haven't seen it. First time, I had to turn around and go back home. Second time, I forgot my wallet. Second time, I uh, went to MSTAR and it was closed. And third time, I went yesterday and it said online 2 o'clock. It started, one of them started at 2 o'clock. Oh, the next start on the show was 345, and I'm like, so I've been to that freaking theater three times to see this movie. Is it good? Okay. Well, I've checked every night. Fire stick had not come up yet, so... With the people walking back and forth around the theater. My son says, I don't like those. I said, Well, 
They're free. You just have to deal with people walking back and forth in the theater. Okay, you should be able to do this in maybe, what, five minutes? Those of you who don't know what to do, first thing you need to do is put them in what? There you go. Y'all are winners. Y'all so smart. Put them in order for No sneezing in class. Have to throw you out. I just want to do this just to kind of bring back your, not back, not the cobweb blues from whenever it was the last day we were here. I think it was last week or Thursday last week. Yeah, it was a week ago. So if you're sitting there going, uh, then it should be beneficial. I just quit. I was, uh, this positive encouragement thing is not that good. <laughs> when the tough get going, quit. 
or blame somebody else. Blame Russia. Call me. Mid-range is the middle one. The average of the men and the max. Take the men and max, add them together, and divide by two. ahead and run a few numbers so you'll you can check your work as you go Most of the time when you're dealing with decimals, you're not going to have a mode. Uh, the further your decimals go, the least likely you're going to have a mode because you're getting more accurate numbers. Thank 
and check the numbers, see what you come up with. Make sure you check that second set because sometimes when you copy and paste, sometimes it throws a monkey wrench in it. Bars to me. Yeah. Got questions asked. about the curve. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Well, variation really is not important. But variation is, you know, you've seen the EKG before. Going up and down, up and down, up and down, that's variation. When you see variation in a graph, their numbers will go up and down, up and down, up and down. Remember, the mean is the number that represents no variation, meaning a straight line. So that means that the variance is a measure of how varied your data is. So if you have a very high variation, that means your data is all over the place. If you have a lower variation, that means that it's tighter data. But your standard deviation can tell you that also. So variation is really not that important. The main two is the mean and the standard deviation. And as you can see, which one has the lower standard deviation? The second set. So automatically you know the second set has tighter data than the first set. That's one of the comparisons when you do the do the math, you got to look at and see what it's telling you. Not just regurgitate the formulas and say, okay, here's your answer. The mean is 7.4. Well, what does that mean? Oh, you don't want to do that. That's the curve. That's what I call the curve. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank <laughs> you. 
All right, so you got your curve right here. What goes in the middle of the curve? The mean. The two most important numbers are what? The mean and the standard deviation. So the mean goes right there. And then to the right, what do you do to the right of zero? You add, right? So that's going to be equal. What do you add? What's the most important beside the mean? Standard deviation. So you take this number. Plus standard deviation. Pretty bit, yeah. But that's because look at the numbers. You got big numbers. Yes. And what do you do on the left hand side? You subtract. Now, everybody turn to the empirical rule in your book or the notes that we took, or you can pull it up whenever. And you know that the middle, let me pick figure out my handy dandy. There we go. We'll use black. And we got little hash marks at each one of these. And the empirical rule says that each one is a certain percentage. Remember me telling you it's like reading your fuel hand on your in your car. You start from the left and you work your way to the right. Okay? And the empirical rule says that 34%, oh well, this is 2.5. I always forget this one. 13.5. 34. Thirty-four, thirteen point five, and two point eight. And ninety-five percent falls within how many standard deviations? Well, I mean, one, two, one, two. So two standard deviations. Well. You could say four, but it's two standard deviations to the left, two standard deviations to the right. The terminology is 95% falls within two standard deviations. And that is what we consider normal. Now, if you take it on out to three standard deviations, like this number right here, whatever this number is, then you're talking about outliers and unusual in right there. And this standard deviation right here, this would be unusual, and this would be an outlier. So you need to learn the empirical rule. The empirical rule is just a bunch of percentages. And you need to learn how to apply that to your problem.
So let's take that same down here and equals main in the middle equals main plus the what? Plus the standard deviation. And if you add, if you want to take it out to three every single time, you can. That's up to you. But most of the time, the book or the directions is going to ask you to take it to two standard deviations. But that's up to you if you want to take it to three. As you can see on the spreadsheet, it's pretty easy. You just copy and drag. So now you know that 95% of the population falls between negative three and what? 235. What's an outlier? Outlier would be 297 or negative 65. What would unusual be? Unusual would be negative 50 or 240. That would be unusual. Okay. Yes, sir. What? Well, it's normal because it's inside the standard deviation. 228 falls right about here. So it would be normal. But see, you, you're basing your normal curve on your data. So naturally, it's going to be inside. Yes, sir? Why would you, so the bottom of the top This one, curve. Why are the top ones going to be that's the empirical rule. In fact, when you pull up, if you go to Google, and I realize this is a lot of work for some of y'all. See here? They already have them there. The reason I picked the one that was blank was because I wanted to put the numbers there. Here's one right here. Now, if you look, each book is different, or each as long as you follow, you know, most of the percentages is good. You see 34, 34, then you see 13 and a half, 13 and a half. Some people do the, like I say, some people eat, drink, and sleep statistics, okay? And they do this. They go to the, like the 100. You don't need to worry about that, okay? Find one that's a little bit easier to read. I don't know. In your book, you should have one. There's one right there. 68% of the data. Well, what's 68 divided by 2? 34, 34. And then this adds 13.5, 13.5. And then this adds a little bit more, 2.5 and 2.5. Um, you look through a lot of them. Some of them break them up more than that. Some of them break them up like that. No, you can't see it, but you just have to look and find the one you want to deal with, and you can copy and post it on your, here's the one right here. See? That's, this one right here is the most normal. This one is the one that you see in most of your books. 34, 34, 13.5, 13.5. Okay? And then you can get more complicated like with that one. I'm sorry. I would I highly suggest that you pick one of these. This is what I would do, and you're going to be doing this from now until chapter six, so you might as well take heed of what I'm fixing to tell you. Take one of these that has the percentages on it. I'm trying to find one that's decent, maybe this one. Because it's got the Z scores on it, and it's also got the percentages, and you can add if you're not doing z-scores, you can just wipe these out or whatever. Take this, save it, 
as an image, then take this image and put it on a piece of paper or go to word processor, <laughs> put six of them on a page, and then print out like one page and run like 10 copies of it as 60 curves that you have. Because we're going to draw these curves after every single problem. And when we get to chapter six and we do chapter you know, six and seven, every problem you have to start by drawing one of these. Okay? So you might as well go ahead and invest in taking the time. And I know you have to hit the print button and you have to, you know, you have to move stuff over, copy and paste, maybe take, you know, a lot of work, five minutes maybe, and then you print it out. And it's very handy because you're going to get tired of drawing these bell curves. All right? So that one is the one that I would suggest right there. You could pull up empirical rule. I always want to put an H in it. Empirical rule. Okay. Oh, I pulled it up in the wrong place. I'm sorry. I thought I was in the thing. Empirical rule. See? And there, there's more that you can use. So find you a curve that you like and make sure it has the z-scores on the bottom. The z-scores are one, two, here's one, there's the z-score right there. It's got the z-scores on the bottom. Okay, you can put your numbers on there. Okay, we're going to talk about z-scores that we haven't already talked about them. I get y'all mixed up with the 103 sometimes. Um, the z-scores are what you use if you're comparing apples to oranges. Right now we're just comparing apples to apples. These are all the same scores. This, this right here, they're all the same thing. East Coast counties, Midwest counties. So and this cost of living index or whatever, this is the same stuff. Now if we were comparing East Coast counties to China counties or whatever, some, somewhere in China, then that would be different. Okay. So, y'all got this. Y'all got the mean and the standard deviation. All right. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to move over to, hmm, I'm going to just move this stuff over. I know the boxes are not going to move, but hold on a second. Five number summary. Okay, the five number summary. I'm going to move it in just a little bit. There we go. I'll do the five number summary just right here in the middle. Five number summary. Men. First quartile. Quartile, third quartile, <coughs> and the max. And that's real easy. That's that one. Max is real easy. That's that one. Second quartile is the median, which is equal to that number. Now, let's put us a dot right here at the median, right there. And put us a dot right here. Now, how many numbers are above that blue dot? Three. So that means to take the median of those three numbers, you find the what? The middle. You find the middle. So since n is three, you find the middle. And that would be that number right there. So that number is our first quartile. Three numbers below, above, above the blue line, so, or above, I can't say above the blue dot very fast. Above the blue dot, so that one is our third quartile.
We don't usually do this, but I'm going to put in here mid-range. Because mid-range is important. Mid-range is your middle of your number line. And I'll take those. Okay, now I want you to draw your number line first. I'm going to draw the number line right here. Draw the number line here. And the first thing I'm going to do just put my min and my max in my middle because that's the number line parts. So my min is 104. Now, do you necessarily need the decimals when you're doing it by hand? Why? Because your pencil is not that thin to get to point one. All right, so just forget about the decimals. And this will be 314. Uh, mm -hmm. And the middle is 209. Down here, 87. Alright, what's the difference between 104 and 209? 105, half of 105 is 52, right? So 52 added to 4 would be 156. 52 added to this is 261. Y'all check, make sure I got the middle. If I added right, y'all have to excuse me, I broke my toe over the weekend. It's kind of hard for me to balance. <laughs> you ever broke a big toe or jammed it real hard? And then what will point there? It looks black. It's rough. Then when you put paint on it, it's like, ah. All right. So, plus 104 to 156. What's that? What's half to 52? 26, so that's what, 130 right here? 26 to this would be 182. 26 to this would be 130, uh, 237. Y'all check my math. 26 to this is 287. And that's pretty much graduated, so you can pretty much plot with that. You can keep going if you want to. Half of 26 is 13. You can put 117 right here. I mean, you keep going. Check my numbers. All right. What's 87 to 158? After 209? 235. That is? Okay, now, down here. What's 87 to 158? I have no idea. It's 71? 70? What's half of 70? 35? Add 35 to this. Uh, 121. 122 is good enough. Add 35 to this. One what? Okay, you said 35, half of 35 is 17. So add 17 to this. You get what? 
104 or 94? Which one is it? Add 17 to this. 139. Add 17 to this. 165. 175. Add 17 to this. 210, I don't know, what is it? All right, now you draw your box plot. Box plot, those three numbers. All right, draw them. So, 123, well, 131 is right in here, that's 131, 140 right in here, and I guess 123 would be somewhere in here. Remember, this is the middle. The middle is down here too, this is the middle right here. I don't know where this came from. Okay, now this one says 93. 93 is going to be right in here. 95 is going to be right in here. It's going to be right next to it. 96 is going to be right next to it. So what does that tell you about your data? Way left. So that means both of them are skewed what? Right. Write that down. Your hump, all your data is on the left-hand side of both of them. Left-hand side of what? Of center. Center is 209 and 158. Everything is determined about the center. Everything in statistics is about the center. If your mean, median, and mode, or whatever, is not near the center, then something's wrong. Well, not mean, median, and mode, but mean, median, and mid-range. Okay? If those three numbers are not close together, then something's wrong. There's a lot of variance, as you were asking while ago about variance. All right? If those numbers are close together, then your data is tight. Your data is not all over the place. Your data is valid. So, which one's tighter, the first group or the second group? The second group. We've, we, we know that by looking at the box plot. We know it by looking at the mean. The mean is lower, I think, isn't it? I can't see it. Yeah. And also the standard deviation is lower. So that means the spread between your standard deviations is smaller because you don't go as far. This is what it's all about. If you can do this and ascertain what's going on with this data, then you're getting the whole point of statistics. If you're just regurgitating and putting numbers up there, you're missing both and the train. Yes? Skewed right is when all your data is to the left. Yes. It's, all, it's opposite. If all your data is on the right, then that means it's skewed what? Left. What does this mean? That means that the cost of living is really low. Now, look at your data. Why is that? Well, what would happen if we change something? What do y'all notice about the two sets of data? That's not rhetorical, I'm asking y'all. You're supposed to speak. What do you notice? There's something in common with both sets of data. They're both pretty close, but what happens? Okay, you got an outlier. That's what an outlier is called. Okay, so let's take our handy dandy cursor and let's put it right here. And somebody give me a number that's in the ballpark of 141. Just give me a number. 
No, you can't go. We got to go higher. 152. I heard 152 first. 152.5. Now watch the data. Watch your watch your median. Watch your range. Uh, median, mean, median, and mid range. Let's see what happens. Now, if you was to do your five number summary again, you would have a different outcome. Look at the standard deviation. Standard deviation is very low. Change this to 100.6. Look at your mean, median, and mid-range. Now, which set of which set is still tighter? The second set is still tighter. But would you say these are skewed left or right? You can't tell until you draw the what? Box plot. But you'll see that it's going to change it dramatically if you drew the box plot with these two numbers. All right? So you can look at the data and tell if there's an outlier. That's just, you know, redneck. You can do that. Oh, yeah, there's an outlier right there. Okay? Or you can see what the outlier does to the data based on the statistics. And you can change it and you can modify it. And why would you modify it? Well, you don't want sloppy data, just like you don't want to do your job sloppy. You don't want sloppy data. So you have to manipulate the statistics? No. Instead of manipulating the statistics, you go out and instead of pulling 500 tires, you pull 5,000 tires. And instead of surveying 500 people, you survey 5,000 people. Okay. Remember, we're not talking about a class project. We're talking about your job. If you're talking about quality assurance, if you're talking about reporting to somebody, if you're talking about making a presentation, you don't want to get up there and look like a what? A fool. So you have to check your data and know what you're doing. And this is very basic. This is very in the office here in Anderson County. I mean, this is very basic stuff. All right? Mm -hmm. You want it to be in the middle, the normal distribution. If this was in the middle, it would look like a normal distribution. Well, if I wasn't drawing a, a straight line, that's what you want it to look like. You want the box plot to be right here. That's where you want it. Okay? Now, what happens when you do not compare apples to apples? Well, that's when you bring in the z-score. So let me go over that right quick so you can still work on your homework. I don't want you all to feel deprived and not work on your homework. It's really rough doing, you know, homework. All right, let's go to uh, Shaq versus LBJ. The reason I have to pull it up on Google is because we had a good book in statistics, but, you know, when you got something good, what do you do? You get rid of it. Yeah, so that's what we have to do now. So. Let's see, where is it? Let's just go to PDF. This is one of the best examples I've ever used. If I can get it pulled up. Oh, I despise these websites. I'm looking for. Oh my gosh. Yeah, this is why people can't. This is why people can't do math. You you pull up something real simple and you got like 15 pages of stuff. 
No wonder they can't teach. Let's try this. Oh my lord. One out of what? Eight hundred. <laughs> Control F. Shut. Thank you. Thank you for. Thank you for that. Okay. What is that? Why didn't it? Thank you. You're so smart. All right. Copy this and down. The example, copy it down. You, you don't have to write word for word. Just say, uh, Lyndon Bain, John LBJ, height 75 inches, uh, Shaq, height 85 inches, and then go on down and get the other stuff. You don't have to write all that stuff about basketball players and stuff like that. Just write the, uh, there's six numbers in that paragraph. Make sure you write them down. Let me blow it up because there's still people that sit in the back of the room that can't see. Best place for them to see. There you go. Write down the height, the means, and the standard deviations. What is the requirements for being president of the United States? Not much, is it? Pretty much anybody can run. That's why I get so irritated when, when I get very irritated when somebody says, well, they can't run for president. Why not? Oh, well, they, he's, not a, he's, not a, he's not a lawyer. He's not a politician. Oh, that drives me crazy. If you have, or you are not a felon, Priority and you, one have, have in on secure channel. And you have proof that you were born in the United States, and you are 35 years old, is it 35? Then you can run for president of the United States. That's the great thing about our country. Okay, you're free to do that. Why is there any age, why is there any uh, height requirements? It has nothing. Yeah, exactly. There's no doesn't affect your ability. Look at who FDR. What happened to FDR? He was in a wheelchair. He still did his job. So if you're a tall president, and it's not a requirement to be tall, technically you could be a big fish in a little pond. Because you're not, it's not required to be, there's no height requirement. So if you're tall, you're a big fish in a little pond. But what's... Or, Plus an advantage. I don't want to say a requirement because Fudd Webb was 5'5 five, five and he could dunk. All right. So what's a advantage to to being a basketball player? Being tall. Okay. Being tall. That's why if you're a six foot third grader, that's why the coach in physical education has you over here shooting basketball. Why everybody else is running laps around the gym. All right? Why? Because you're a six foot third grader. Chances are you're going to play basketball. All right? Or somebody's going to try to get you to play basketball. So, is Shaq a big fish in a little pond or a little fish in a big pond? He's a little fish in a big pond because everybody in the NBA is what? Tall. Tall. Now, yes, Shaq is one of the tallest players that's not from Asia, okay? Or from Zimbabwe, or there's those two dudes. One guy, he was from China. He's like eight foot tall. And then that one guy, he's just a stick. I don't know what his name is. Yeah, whatever. You could, golly, that guy's, how tall is he? It's amazing. Anyway, those are outliers. What's his name again? Zimbul? Manute Bull. He was probably a six foot baby. Okay? That mug is tall. And what's the what's the guy from Asia? What's his name? Yao Ming. How tall is he? They're outliers, okay? To make the long story short, 
Everybody in the NBA is above what? 6'3? Six, three? Yeah, six, so that is a require not a requirement, but it's an advantage. So most of your people in the NBA are going to be tall. So Shaq is not a big fish in a little pond. He's a little fish in a big pond because he's tall and everybody else is tall. Okay? Now, the, the, the key word in, in this problem is in italic right there. Relatively. Any redneck with two teeth in his head can tell you that Shaq is taller than LBJ, right? I mean, unless you live under a rock, I mean, Shaq doing all those commercials with the back cream and, and the general insurance. and I mean, everybody knows Shaq, and he's got a sense of humor, which is odd, but, you know, some people, they, they get on TV, they don't have a sense of humor, but he has a sense of humor. LBJ... In my opinion, was a racist bastard. Okay, that's just my opinion. All right, he was he was the epitome of racist, but that's just my opinion. Um, was he a good president? No, I don't think he was. Should he have been president? No, but that gets into something else that we won't discuss which is the president before him and how that ended up. So we won't talk about that. The whole point is I don't think he should have been president. Uh, but I didn't live in the 60s. I was born in 66. And that was way back that was 63. That was what I was thought. The whole point is there are two different worlds. The president and the and, and basketball. Two of the different worlds. So you've got to put them on one graph. So you have to change them to z-scores. And there is your formula for z-score. So write it down. You don't have to write both of them down because they're the same thing. All right? You take your height and you subtract what? The mean, Hubert. That's right, class. And you divide it by the standard deviation, Hubert. That's what the S is for. Now, you don't start thinking, okay? Because sometimes when y'all start thinking, you blow fuses, okay? I'm not talking about y'all in here. I'm talking about students in general, okay? And my daddy says, I didn't pay you to think. Don't start thinking too much. Because what happens is y'all start saying, oh, that's negative, so I need to switch it around. No, you don't do anything. You put the numbers in where they belong. So... Go ahead and find the z-score for LBJ and find the z-score for Shaq. Shouldn't take you too long. It's just three numbers. Unless you're a failure. Did everybody say LBJ? Yeah. I'm pretty sure everybody is calling me by the That's really sad. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were talking about that's really sad because LBJ was a president. Oh, yeah, that's right. Y'all don't study history in K-12 anymore. I forgot. Y'all study, y'all study revised history is what y'all study. Y'all study the history that People want you to know, not that what you should know. LBJ was the president that took over after Kennedy was shot. Doesn't it say that he's a president? Oh, I'm sorry, y'all can't read. <laughs> No, John Connolly, the governor of Texas, got shot. Yeah, LBJ, that's why presidents and vice presidents are very rarely together. Very rarely at events when they're not in a building or something. That's why, yeah, they don't want them together. 
So that's why they go to a funeral. Usually the vice president goes to funerals, unless it's a president or something, then the president goes to the president's funeral. But all other dignitaries, usually the vice president goes to that. It's very rare you see a vice president and president at outdoors together at an event. Yes, ma'am. You will always be given six numbers or two numbers or, or three numbers for each one. Yes. To find the z-score, you have to have three numbers. You have to have the x, which is the height. You have to have the average, and you have to have the standard deviation. All that will be given to you. Now, after you get through, you bring it in. Y'all bear with me a second. I'm trying to impress y'all with my methods. You bring it in the curve. Now, that's why I told y'all to make sure that you you do the z-scores on your... So this one is very generic. I didn't put the z-scores on it. So, put the z-scores on it. The middle is always what? Zero. Negative one. Negative two. One. And two. Ninety-five percent falls within two what? Two standard deviations. So anything in those dotted lines are normal is normal. Now, somebody give me the numbers for uh, LBJ. Seventy-five minus over. Is equal to 1.6, 1 1.67. 1 so he's right about, there's 1.5, 1 1.67. We put LBJ right there. Okay, what's the check? 85 minus 80. And what does that come out to do? So he's right here. Shaq is right there. So which one is closest to unusual? So he's relatively taller. Now, you got to think, okay, not redneck with one tooth. you got to think. In the population of presidents versus the population of basketball players, who is relatively taller? LBJ or Shaq? LBJ is relatively taller, basically because there's no requirement for being tall as president. That's why. Okay? The further you are out, the more unusual you are. See, the unusual is past the two. So the further you are out, the more ER you are, is what I tell students. Taller, shorter, wider, fancier, whatever you want to call it, okay? The, the further you are out, the more ER you are, okay? And that's how you do Z-scores. Now, that's one way to do Z-scores. There's another way to do Z-scores. We've got to talk about it, too, but not right now, okay? Question. Now, right now, we have covered about 80% of Chapter 3. 80% of Chapter 3. We've got about 20%. More Z scores, and I need to show you how to do the frequency, the mean and the standard deviation of the frequency distribution, which you can't do by your calculator. I will also show you how to do this on the calculator. Not this, but the previous. Finding the mean, median, five number summary, and all that. So we're probably talking about a test, maybe, I doubt the end of next week, but probably the beginning of the next week. So that means, are we close to the 19th yet? What's today? Oh my gosh! We might make it on the 19th. 
some of y'all might, might can run around in circles and panic. All right, let me call the roll. Thank <laughs> you.